you know, the people who question our faith or question faith in general, um, hopefully at some point in their lives, you know, they, they come to this realization that, you know, there's a much bigger picture. There's somebody who um, is all loving. There is somebody who does have grace and understanding for, you know, the life that you've lived so far. And it can only be you to come to that realization. I don't think you could ever force somebody to be faithful. Um, it's just something that they have to go through to um, get to where they need to be. Welcome to a special edition of Jesus Calling Stories of Faith, featuring Colton Underwood and Cassie Randolph, who met while starring on the ABC hit TV show, The Bachelor. Neither Cassie or Colton would have ever thought they would meet the love of their lives in this very unique and public setting. But when they did, they also bonded in a way they didn't expect, realizing they shared a passion for their faith and ultimately felt that God had been the one to lead them on this unusual path that allowed them to find each other. They speak to us about life after The Bachelor, the challenges of being public figures, and why it's important to them to use their voices to help people. Many who, like Colton, have faced depression or anxiety and let them know they're not alone. So, hi, I'm Cassie and I'm 24. I'm from Huntington Beach, California. And um, I'm in grad school right now for speech pathology and dating Colton. <laughs> and I'm Colton and I'm dating Cassie and I'm 27. Um, I grew up in Illinois. I was born in Indiana. The last five years of my life, I lived in Colorado, and now I'm out here in LA. Um, I played football in college and professionally for three years um, before this crazy whirlwind of this last year has become what it has become. So I'm very lucky and very blessed to meet Cass. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I think growing up for me in a small town, I always had this aspiration of being a professional football player. Um, while a lot of people thought it was too lofty of a goal and too crazy of a dream, um, my family never thought it was, and they really helped support me and support all of my ambitions and goals that I wanted to achieve and allowed me to be successful in that arena. And I don't think it was till my junior year of college where it real, really became real for me, um, where I had scouts and uh, NFL teams reaching out and scheduling meetings. So it was a it was really cool to see that all sort of come together and it was unbelievable for me to sort of accomplish that goal and that dream of mine. You know, growing up, I I don't know, I never had like a big thing like football, like Colton's dream that he had. Um, but I think from when I was in high school, I knew that I wanted to go into speech or at least like pursue something kind of in the medical field in school. Um, and so I've just really stuck with that. And I've been in speech pathology for the past like five years now, um, or since 2013. So yeah, six years. Wow. Time flies. <laughs> Time flies. <laughs> I was sort of going through a weird year um, where I had just broken up with a girlfriend and I was just getting out of football, so I was very lost, and I didn't really know what was next. And I had my family, which was great, and I had God um, at the time, but I was still felt like I was missing something in my life, and I wanted to share my life with somebody. So I went on a television show called The Bachelorette, which didn't work out for me. Then I went to Bachelor in Paradise, which didn't work out again, so then I became The Bachelor, and that's where I met Cassie. Um, it's a show that is unique in the fact that you get to sort of explore many options and date many women. And for me, um, that didn't last very long because I found and met Cassie, who um, I feel like checked off every box, if not more than what I was looking for, and like showed me things that I didn't even know that I needed in a relationship very early on and going through that has only made our bond and our relationship even stronger. And the fact that, you know, we keep our faith and our values and our morals sort of at the forefront of our relationship is what is gonna allow us to not only continue to be successful in this relationship, but it's sort of how we started and built that. I know at times people be, 
could say, you know, why can't you just go on a dating app or why can't um, you just go on dates and do things a normal way. I've never been normal um, in that type of thing. And in the weirdest way for me, the show is one of the most real ways to actually get down and meet somebody with no distractions, um, no phones, no TV. You really just have those conversations and meaningful conversations that sometimes you don't have, you know, over social media or over dinner dates nowadays. So um, in a weird way, it was a save my sort of my saving grace and obviously it led me to her. So I'm very, very happy I did it. You know, it was a really crazy time <laughs> filming Bachelor and I think, I mean, I definitely held back a lot during filming because I mean, there was like 29 other girls there and <laughs> I was like, I don't know if he's into me or not. But once I kind of let myself just relax and be all in this relationship, um, I found that we have so much in common and we have, we just really understand each other and really get each other. We're like best friends, honestly. And I think that's the best thing that you can find in a relationship and someone that you're gonna spend your life with is being a best friend to where you just get each other and you can have fun together and you can have serious conversations. Um, and I think that's what I love about this relationship more than anything is that like we fully trust each other and get each other. Yeah, I think too, a good part about being on the show is what you said about not having the distractions and really getting to know each other. I feel like I've known you a lot longer than just a year right now and I think it's because with filming of the show and then also post-show things going through so much together, it's really grown our relationship and it's, we've formed a deeper bond because of everything that we've been through together. Yeah. Um, because we do have common foundation, which is our faith. And we really bonded on that through filming. It was like one of our first conversations was about our faith. And I, I think- I think I remember it was like on the second, not the first night, it was like our first group date uh, we were holding hands and I was fidgeting with her rings because I'm a nervous fidgeter. I like to be messing with things and I was like spinning one of her rings and I looked down to see what I was spinning and I turned around and it was Jeremiah 2911 on her ring, which to me was the Bible verse that I have sort of framed and lived my life by because of the trials and tribulations that I was put through with football and really just trusting in his plans that I battled through a lot of injuries um, in my time playing professionally and I was always on practice squad so I was um, always hurt with either my hamstrings or my shoulders and it was almost me asking like really you're going to get me this far God but I can't I can't make the team or you're going to allow me to see what I can have but not give it all to me um, but it that verse to me sort of just reminded me to just, just trust him trust in his plans like he has it all figured out and I don't need to understand why. So like when I looked down and I like saw that and it really hit me and it sort of gave me a flashback to, you know, when I questioned him the most when I was injured, of like why, like, why does this have to happen? You know, why me? Um, but when I saw that, I think it was like, immediately it was like a sign from God. And that's something that I really believe in. I believe that he talks to us through situations, um, through things, through other people. Um, that's something that I'm, you know, I really believe in. Me too. We both have a very similar background where we were introduced to God and Christianity at a very young age. It was hard kind of growing up because your values don't always align with everyone around you, but that doesn't mean that your values are necessarily wrong and your faith isn't, just because it's different from other people's, doesn't make it wrong. And I think to me, it was really important that like, I had my own relationship with God and having, everyone has their own individual relationship with God and that's what really matters. And I think for us, it's really important to know like, hey, this is your relationship with God. Um, there shouldn't be set hours that you can only talk to him or shouldn't be set expectations that you need to hit. Um, that's what for us is so cool with, with Jesus Calling and reading the book is it's on our own time. And whether we start every morning with it or going to bed, it's the last thing we read. Um, I think for me, it's impacted my life 
in a major way because it sort of fits everything that we talked about on the show. It's like it's your yeah. own relationship and you can make your own time for God and that's what we do. And he plays a big role in not only our lives but our relationship too. Yeah. And I think, I mean, even on the show, I would, I brought it with me and I would literally read it every day yep. with Kaylin actually. That's yeah. how me and Kaylin bonded a lot over Jesus Calling. Because <laughs> yeah. we would read it together all the time and journal about it. And it really like got me through. I feel like every single day in it had a different message that it always relates to your life no matter what you're reading in some way, so which is yeah. really nice. I haven't always been the most outspoken or the most open in regards to my faith. And I think it was important for me to stand up and with what I believe in because if I'm gonna be awarded a platform and if I'm gonna have a voice, I wanna make sure that um, you know I'm sharing a message and I'm hopefully impacting or helping change somebody's life. I think there's always gonna be people who question our faith and question faith in general. Um, and as much as you wanna get defensive and as much as you wanna um, really push back, I think for me, it's important to realize like the only person who can really come to terms and the only way you can get them to sort of see that view is to let them go through something themselves. And I know for me, I went through a rough year where um, I stepped away from the church for a while and, and didn't have as much faith as I used to have. And I remember one of my teammates sort of reaching out and sort of holding his hand out and helping me out and he brought me into Bible study in the locker room and on a Thursday and it sort of helped change and sort of re-engage um, my faith for me. So if I could help do that to just one person or if I could help get one person into, you know, reading their daily reading or, um, you know, maybe praying before they go to bed that night, then I helped. I did, you know, I did something um, that is hopefully in God's eyes his work. So, yeah, I don't yeah. know. I think it's just it's a, sort of important just to do right, and I think that's the right thing to do. There's so many things in this world that you do because you want to be successful at them, and then at the end of the day, you find yourself being so unsatisfied. And I think things that really truly like make us happy are like helping other people and like bringing good into the world and you can use a platform for like making money and doing I don't know doing fun things all the time but it's really important I think for people who do have a platform to really use it to help other people and I think I mean, I'm still figuring out how to do that exactly. I don't think I really, I think we're both still figuring that out. Yeah. And everyone is, but I definitely want to find some way to do that. And I also think that sharing your faith is so important because this world is just filled with loneliness. And I mean, more than ever, I think people are struggling with like depression and anxiety. And a lot of it's because they probably feel lonely. And having my faith, I think, even when I've gone through super lonely times, has really helped me feel um, not alone. And it truly does help a lot. I share a lot of the daily readings from Jesus Calling. And whether it's something that I'm particularly going through or that I've already gone through, um, I like to share it with people and I can't tell you how many times I've received messages saying, this is exactly what I needed to hear today. Thank you so much. Or thank you for sharing this. Or, you know, hey, what, um, what book is this? Or where did you get this from? And I love being able to share and say, I got this from Jesus Calling. This is how I start my day. Or this is how I end my day. And I think it was just a calming factor for me to read that and just be like, everything's gonna be okay. You know, even if today goes terribly wrong, it's, so that tomorrow can be better. And so that this week can shake out how it needs to. I think that's the cool thing for me. And I think for everybody who reads that is you can apply it to different aspects of your life and really come out stronger. Yeah. 
I had a lot of anxiety and it was mainly in social situations and it was it was more so the fact that everybody knew everything about me and I didn't know anything about them. So in a weird way, I felt like I lost the art of being human, of where you have an engaging conversation, you could ask questions, you can um, find things out about each other and have somebody be curious about something that you do. And I felt like I lost that off the show. And, and I realized like I signed up for it. I know I, I did that to myself, but I still struggled with it. And um, I still struggle with anxiety. Um, you know, off the show at times, I s still struggled with a little bit of mild depression too, but anxiety's always been something that I've had in my life. And I'm, I'm an overthinker in most situations and I'm very critical on myself. And I think one thing that I've learned, especially this last year is, if I'm gonna be forgiving and non-judgmental and show grace for others, I have to do the same to myself um, and for myself. I know that I'm not perfect and I have these expectations and um, I think it's always been instilled in me, not only from my background, but also being an athlete of like trying to be perfect. Um, and I think once I took a step back and realized like, hey, it's okay if I make these mistakes, it's okay if I said the wrong thing in this certain situation or if I felt uncomfortable in this certain situation, like it was okay for me to feel that. Like I'm human, I can feel different things and different emotions. So I think battling with anxiety, it's just sort of having an understanding of like some days your best um, are maybe getting up and making your bed, having a cup of coffee and sitting and watching TV. I mean, maybe that's all you can do in Sounds that day. Like a nice day. <laughs> Sounds like a great day. <laughs> But then other days, maybe you can go volunteer. Maybe you can go work out. Maybe you can you know, really get after it. I think it's just having that understanding and that grace that every day is gonna be different and that your bests are gonna be different. I think in a world where everything gets so busy and sometimes it's really hard to make time for um, just yourself and God and your faith, I think it's really easy to forget about it. Honestly, that's something I struggle with. But having Jesus calling like by your bed or in your room or somewhere just easily, you have it on your phone. Yeah, I bought the book on my phone. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. It just, it makes it so easy to be right there to read every day. And it, it takes like one minute and it really can change your entire day. And I don't know about you, but literally every single page that I read can somehow correlate to something that you're going through or something in your day. There's always a message, there's always a there's takeaway. There's always something that gets yeah. you with the book, no matter how simple it is. Yeah. This is from Jesus Calling, June 10th. Rest in me, my child. Give your mind a break from planning and trying to anticipate what will happen. Pray continually, asking my spirit to take charge of the details of this day. Remember that you are on a journey with me. When you try to peer into the future and plan for every possibility, you ignore your constant companion, who sustains you moment by moment. As you gaze anxiously into the distance, you don't even feel the strong grip of my hand holding yours. How foolish you are, my child. Remembrance of me is a daily discipline. Never lose sight of my presence with you. This will keep you resting in me all day, every day. I think for me, that reading in particular speaks a lot about you know the anxieties and sort of the distractions that you face on a daily basis. And I know for me, um, I get in my head a lot or I overanalyze certain situations and I think it's just trusting that every detail of the day is already mapped out. And it's going to be, you know, God's way and um, he already has a plan for you. And yeah. I think that's important to, to remember is, you know, you're going through something so you can come out either stronger or better. You can keep up with Colton and Cassie on social media and also found out how they're giving back through Colton's Legacy Foundation that helps kids with cystic fibrosis. Visit the foundation website at coltonslegacy.org. Thanks for joining us on this special edition of Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. We'll be back with a new episode featuring heroic Southwest Airlines pilot, Captain Tammy Jo Schultz, at our next regularly scheduled time. Thank you for watching Jesus Calling Stories of Faith. 
To learn more about how to keep up with our shows bi-monthly and to listen to our weekly podcast, please visit youtube.com slash Jesus Calling Book to view and hear previous episodes and to watch a short informational video about how to access all things Jesus Calling on audio and video formats. Plus, learn how to subscribe to our podcast and video channels. Your subscription helps get the word out to more people who will benefit from these inspirational stories of faith.